Hi, welcome to the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal video. My name is Danny Milton, and today we're gonna to be working on my 2018 Giant Rain. What we're gonna be doing today is replacing the two piston brakes with four piston brakes. Um, the brakes I had originally were the XT two piston brakes, and we're gonna be switching out to the, four, the XT four piston brakes. I will put a link in the description down below if you wanna purchase those brakes. It'll send you over to Amazon, and if you purchase those brakes through Amazon, it'll help support the channel. The main reason why I wanted to switch to four piston brakes is because I just need a little bit more stopping power. Uh, I'm a bigger guy, you know, six foot two, 240 pounds. And sometimes in some of those real tight sections, I just need to slow down just a little bit faster. And just recently went up to Snow Summit and I could have used just a little bit more braking power on some of those trails. So what I'm gonna do in today's video is I'm gonna be replacing the rear brake. Um, I've already done the front one. The front one is pretty easy, you don't have to you know, route the cable through any parts of the frame or anything like that. Whereas the rear brake, you're gonna have to route the cable through your frame. Um, you're gonna have to, you know, pull the, pull the old cable out, put the new cable through. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do to set it up, to bleed the line and get it all set up and, and working for you. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is take the old brake off. And to get the old brake off, we're gonna have to take off the grip and take the brake off of the handlebar itself. We're gonna use a three millimeter Allen wrench to take the grip off. Just gotta loosen that screw and pull the grip off. We're going to use a four millimeter Allen wrench to loosen up the brake and slide that, I gotta turn the handlebar just a little bit because there's not a lot of extra cable here to slide the brake off of the handlebar. So now you can see here that we have the brake and the shifter off of the handlebar. Uh, this is also an XT shifter, so that's part of the iSpec thing. That will just come right out of the brake itself and we'll move to the back and start taking that apart. So as you can see here, my brake line comes around this way and goes in through the left side of my frame, then goes through the down tube, comes out here in this little spot, and then runs along the back of the triangle, the rear triangle, to the rear brake housing. So right here to remove this bolt and this bolt from the frame, we're gonna be using a five millimeter Allen key. Just gonna loosen that up. And loosen this one. There's gonna be a bunch of extra little washers and pieces in here between the bolt and the actual brake itself. And then also you have your adapter just underneath that. So now we have the rear brake. You can see the two piston brake is off of the frame, but we do have a couple of small zip ties here holding it to the rear triangle. We've got one, two, three, and four zip ties. We're gonna cut those and go from there. Just gonna use a small pair of wire cutters to cut these zip ties. You want to make sure that you do not cut into the brake housing line. So now you can see our rear brake is completely loose from the frame itself and the cable is going into this end of the housing. One other thing you might notice too is my bike is pretty disassembled right now. I took off both of the wheels. I actually have the rear derailleur off as well because I'm going to be switching, it, uh, switching out to the XT uh, what is it, 10 to 51 uh, whole drivetrain system. So I have my old drivetrain taken off as well. You don't have to do that to replace one of these uh, rear brakes. The cranks are also out as well. I just wanted to have as little on the bike as possible just so that you can see a little bit more in detail of what we're doing. So now that we have the rear brake completely taken off the bike, what we're gonna have to do is this is a little bit of an older frame. This is a 2018, so it doesn't have internal routing for all of the cables. Uh, basically, the cables are just loose inside of the frame. So what we're gonna have to do is take this end 
of the brake line off of the rear brake. And pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape that to the other, the new end of our new brake line and use that to pull it through the frame. That way we don't have to worry about fishing it out or sitting here spending, you know, countless hours trying to fish the new line through there and to get it to come out one of these holes. Okay, so this is gonna be the one kind of messy part of this whole enterprise is removing this cable from the rear brake and obviously there's brake fluid in there, that's how the brake works. So when we remove this end, there's gonna be a bunch of brake fluid in the line. What I'm gonna do basically is just unscrew this, hold the cable into this cup, and squeeze out as much of the brake fluid that I can out of the line. That way it's not dripping everywhere and getting on the inside of my frame. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take the, unscrew the brake line from the housing here. Hopefully not too much fluid will come out of here when we do this. I'm going to drop that screw, put the cable inside of the cup right here, and then we're going to squeeze the brake a couple times and try and get out as much of the brake fluid as we can. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but there is a little bit of brake fluid coming out of the line there. So you can see here on my frame where the cable's going, you have these little rubber inserts. Those inserts just pop right out. And what we're gonna have to do is feed the line through this insert and the new line attached to it up through the frame to the other end. So here's the brake we're gonna be putting on. This is the Shimano XT. It's the BRM8120 four piston XT awesome brake. So the way they ship the brakes now is it's not all one piece. They don't have the brake line attached to the lever itself. They have this little plastic on the end of the cable. So this is filled full of brake fluid. And then the lever is in the box as well. And that has a little plug so that the brake fluid inside the lever doesn't leak it everywhere as well. So you can see here, this is the old brake line. This is the top part of the new brake line that's gonna go into the brake lever. What we're gonna do is just hold them like this and use electrical tape to tape them together. So it's pretty much one continuous line. So when I pull this cable through the bike, it'll pull the new brake line through the bike as well and out the other end. Okay, so you can see we, I use electrical tape to tape the two lines together. So hopefully we'll be able to pull that through the frame without losing either piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the cable through this end and pull it out the other from the top. Just feed it through nice and easy and slow. Let's get that little piece through there, like that. All right, so right here is the top part of my frame. You can see this is the cable for the derailleur. This is our brake line. We're gonna pull this out, and you can see the brake line actually has this little foam piece on there, so it probably doesn't make so much noise rattling inside the frame. So we're gonna pull that nice and slow. I'm gonna push a little bit on the other end and you can see our tape is starting to come out. Just gotta get that piece out and just pull a little bit farther. Don't wanna pull too hard and have the tape tear. And that is the gold lettering of our brake line, the new brake line, so we're good. All right, so you can see we have our new brake line coming out the top. And what we need to do is put the foam piece back on and also the insert that holds the cables in place on the side of the frame. All right, so you see we got the foam insert back on there and we've got a little insert holding the cables onto the edge of the frame back together. Okay, so now you can see right here we've got the new XT four piston brake lever. Uh, pretty much the main difference is that the clamp is near the middle of the actual housing itself and makes it a little bit more solid. There's a little piece right here that sits against your uh, handlebars. You can see it comes with this little white piece in the center here. That's so that you don't depress the brake lever. And there is a cap on the end because there is brake fluid in this unit. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the actual brake caliper to the frame. Uh, when you do run your cable through, you do want it to come to the inside of your rear triangle here. You don't want it to be on the outside here and then come back around through the frame because if something hits it, you know, it's going to, it could tear your, it could tear your brake line. So if you have it on the inside like this, the brake line is just a little bit more protected. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is installing the rear brake onto the frame itself. You do have to use your uh, adapter here and the original screws that you just had. Um, be careful, there is a difference in length. One bolt is longer than the other because one bolt has more metal to go through to attach the cable. So just set that like that. I'm gonna grab this longer bolt. Put that through both. Just get that started. And the same, come on now. The same with the rear bolt. Just gonna get that started there and then use our five mil wrench to tighten that down. Okay, so what we have to do now is route our cable along the frame here. Over these little mount parts, we're going to use zip ties to hold them down. Okay, you can see here I've got these two zip ties in the back tightened down already because I want there to be a little bit of give back here, a little extra cable. It's going across the frame and into the insert into the bottom tube. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is we have the cable coming out the top end. And we have all of the slack pulled through the frame itself. We're going to be attaching it to the brake lever. And what you want to do here is kind of loosely mount the lever onto your handlebars, get it about where you want, and see if you have too much slack in the cable. You may have to shorten the brake hose uh, cable line. Just inside the brake lever, you can see this little yellow stopper here. This is the actual nut, and inside there is the olive and the little metal piece that you're going to be putting on the end of the brake line before you tighten it all up and set it all in place. So as we're fitting on the brake lever onto the handlebar here, I've got my grip slid back on, not tightened up yet. And this little white piece right here that's inside the brake lever is keeping it, keeping the lever from actually being pulled so that you don't squeeze any of the fluid out of it. But to get this into place, we're gonna have to remove that. Now for right now, I'm just gonna leave it in there because I don't wanna take the chance of squeezing any of that brake fluid out. But we're gonna grab the hose and attach it and see uh, how much cable we have. One thing you also wanna do is this little piece right here is the cover that goes over the cable and onto the end of your uh, brake lever here. So you're gonna make sure before you put the olive and all that stuff into the end of the cable, you wanna put this little piece over the end of your brake, uh, your brake line. So we've got the brake hose coming up to about where it's gonna be, probably fit about that far into the actual brake lever itself. Now, if I leave the cable housing this long, there's gonna be a little bit too much excess as we turn the handlebars. So I probably want it to be about right there so it looks like I'm at the cut maybe an inch or two off of the brake hose. So as you can see here, the little metal insert is already inside the brake line itself. So when we take this bolt off, you're going to see the olive that goes over the brake line is just inside there. We're going to put the olive over the brake line, push that all back into the lever itself, and then tighten it down. We're going to unscrew this piece out, get to that olive, put the olive on the end of the brake line, and then screw it all back together. You do need to fish the olive piece out, this little olive piece out. I'll put a little close-up picture of it. Just a little copper piece that's gonna go on the end of your brake cable. That is kind of like a crush washer that's gonna be inside. So first we have our plastic cap that's gonna cover up everything. The screw we took out of the end of the brake line here, make sure you put it in the right way with the threads closer to this end. Then we're gonna take our little olive and we're gonna put all of that into the brake housing here and hand tighten that. 
at our rag because we have a little bit of brake fluid there. You see there's a little bit of white thread lock on there. Do that up by hand. And then what you have to do is just tighten this. What you have to do is just tighten this nut down and it'll squeeze that olive and use it as kind of like a crush washer. Make sure that your brake line is pushed all the way in and is nice and firm. And we're simply just gonna tighten this down until it won't tighten anymore. What this nut is gonna do is it's going to smash that little olive in there and crimp down the brake line so that none of our brake fluid comes out. Just be careful you have a nice tight fit because this little nut right here tends to strip pretty easily. So before you start squeezing that brake lever, one thing I do want to tell you is a little parts kit here. This little red insert, you want to put that between your rear brake pads. That way it's not squeezing the brake pads too tight and when you go to install your wheel with the rotor, that space is still left in there. We can take out this little white piece that just pulls right out. And now our brake level will work. So now that we have that red insert in our rear brake lever or brake caliper, we can squeeze the brake a couple times here. And we are gonna have to bleed this because as we put that cable into the housing, there's gonna be a little bit of air inside the reservoir here. We're gonna bleed that in just a second. We just wanna squeeze the trigger a couple times or the lever a couple times and make sure that none of our oil is leaking out of this piece right here. And it looks like we're good. I don't see any oil coming out. So we can cover that. So you can see we've got our brake lever all set up here. What we're gonna do now is just bleed through the top here. So bleeding Shimano brakes is much easier to do than... All right, so all we have to do is just take this screw out and insert our little bleed cup. Be very careful and gentle with this screw. They do strip and it's very difficult to get a replacement. Also on that screw is a little tiny washer. If you lose that washer, that little rubber washer, the brake fluid will come out of there as soon as you squeeze that lever. So definitely do not lose that washer as well. So here's our little bleed cup right here. You can see it's got the little plunger inside there. Just gonna pour a little bit of brake fluid in this and then attach that to the caliper itself. We're gonna take our cup and this just screws directly into the brake lever. Got to be real careful with that. Going to remove the plunger. Get a little close-up shot here of this greatness. As you can see, just because of uh, the pressure itself, a little air bubble came up. But watch, as soon as we start squeezing the brake lever, all those little air bubbles popping out. We're going to snap the brake lever a couple of times. We're going to give, we're going to give the housing a couple of taps here. Make sure we get all of that air out of this top end of the feed. Give it a couple of taps. Make sure we break all of those air bubbles loose. Snap the brake lever a couple more times. Let's see. Don't see any more air coming out. That's good. Our brake lever is nice and firm. So we are going to put the plunger back in, take the bleed cup off. And there's one last little trick I need to show you before you put the screw back on. So if you can see right here where our bleed cup was, there's a little bit of air between the edge of the threads and where the brake fluid or the brake fluid is. So what you want to do is just use one of your Allen wrenches and just put a couple more drops of brake fluid in there and then put your screw in. So as you put the screw in, it's going to push that extra brake fluid out and not push air into the system. So we're just going to use any of our Allen wrenches here. Just dip it into your brake fluid and just drop at a time. Let's see, two, three, 
four, five, six, about seven drops. So now you can see the brake fluid, you might not be able to see in that camera, but I can see that the brake fluid is all the way up to the edges of the thread. You can see right there after we put those extra drops in that the brake fluid is all the way up to the edge just above the threads here. So as we put the screw in, a little bit of that will come out, but better to have a little bit of brake fluid come out than air getting pushed into the system. So we've got our little screw going back in here. Make sure you do have the rubber washer on there. Just set that down and slowly put that screw in. Maybe have a rag here just to catch some of this excess brake fluid as it comes out. Be very gentle with these threads. You don't have to torque this down too much because that rubber washer is going to seal it up nice and great. Wipe some of that brake fluid off and let's check our brake. Look at that. We've got maybe a half inch of play. That's about where I like my point to be right there. So looks like we're going, we're doing good. Okay, so we have our brake line attached to the brake lever. We bled out all of the air. The brake is 100% rock solid, ready to go. Last thing you have to do is just take out the little red insert from the rear brake uh, caliper itself. That way, uh, you know, as we were squeezing this brake lever here, if you didn't have that insert in there, the pads would get pushed all the way together. And then to push those pads apart is really difficult. You actually have to uh, take this screw out again, put that cup in there and then push the pads out. So it'll push out that extra fluid that's in the system so that those pads can get pulled apart again and you can get your actual rotor in there. Um, like I said, don't forget before you put that screw in, put those couple extra little drops of brake fluid in there. That will keep the air out of this top part reservoir here and you know your brakes won't start to get soft in like about a couple days or whatever. One of the last things you can do is now that we have everything all hooked up together is go back to your rear triangle, tighten up those uh, zip ties and you're going to be good to go. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys found this interesting. Hopefully if you've been had any problems or been worried about trying to do something like this yourself, Hopefully this video will help you. If you do have any additional questions, please leave those in the comments down below. So please do all that fun stuff for me. Like, comment, share. Definitely subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell so that you get notified of future videos. And the last thing you do for me to help support the channel is click on one of those boxes in the corners there. One will take you to a ride playlist, another to a favorite video. And you can always click that logo over there, the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal logo to subscribe. Thanks a lot.